This is The Natural Laboratory, a podcast exploring science for Bay Area National Parks. I'm Cassandra Brooks. Phytoplankton form the base of the ocean's food chains, transferring energy from the sun to sustain the global ocean. These tiny floating plants account for half of the photosynthetic activity on Earth. They also generate the majority of our fossil fuels. 95% of oil is marine algae, marine plankton. 95%? Yeah. I'm, I mean, the vast majority of oil comes from marine plankton. That's Ivano Ayeo, a geological oceanographer at Moss Landing Marine Laboratories in Monterey Bay, California. According to Ivano, plankton populations bloom, then die and drift to the seafloor. Slowly they accumulate, getting compressed and buried under sediments. And so long as they're in low oxygen conditions, the plankton will be preserved. And how long of a time period are we talking about here for millions, all of this Millions to hundreds of millions of years. Okay. It takes millions of years for oil to form. Yeah. yeah. So even though probably right now there's oil, new oil being formed all the time, it's... We'll have to wait to fill millions <laughs> to, to hundreds of millions of years. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's the, the scale of things we're talking about is insane. So, yeah, our rate of consumption is orders of magnitude faster than anything it has to do with the actual formation of oil. We are, we are exploiting something that moves so slowly that there's no way that can be regenerated anytime soon. So, but that's what we use in our cars, something that formed 100 million years ago. So it would be really nice to have this in gas station and just people in that like, wait a second, you know, I'm burning this thing in the next two hours and it took, you know, 200 million years to form. And it isn't even just gas for our cars. Our entire Western lives depend on petroleum products. Our roads are covered in tar. Petroleum-based plastics are all around us. In our phones, computers, cameras, toys, clothes, toothbrushes, and cosmetic bottles. And almost everything we buy at the grocery store is covered in plastic. And while we once found reserves of oil so rich and abundant they came bubbling out of the ground, we now have to probe ever deeper and farther. At this point, we have to use a great deal of oil to drill for more oil. So that's the problem, and it is that when we were working on land mostly, and you could poke just the ground, mm -hmm. and the oil was coming out, that was it. It costed, I don't know, one gallon of oil to drill 100 gallons of oil. Mm -hmm. Right now we're talking about uh, one gallon of oil to drill, I don't, I don't know, 10 gallons of oil, right. or 20. So it's becoming more and more uh, expensive. So that, and that's the problem, and when you push the technology offshore, not only you increase the risks, but also it's very expensive. You know, an offshore oil rig is a really expensive thing to run, and but uh, our thirst for oil is so much that we are we are really like drug addicts right now. We are looking for a little drop somewhere. So I gave a lecture after the oil spill. You did? Yeah, on the deep water horizon. So that's why it's actually neat that you asked me to talk to you because I actually I was uh, reading more about uh, offshore drilling and uh, so this is one. This is a map from 2006. There are 3,858 oil and gas platforms only in the Gulf of Mexico. It's like covered. No way. Yes. <laughs> Where they I mean, look at that. They're just next to each other. So think about when you have a hurricane going through this thing. It's insane. I, I don't know. I mean, our society is a fossil fuel based society. Our civilization in the last uh, several hundred years has been, I mean, since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, has been completely dependent on fossil fuels. But that's why we had this amazing uh, increase in technology. I mean, in the last few hundred years, technology has been, and also life quality in a way. I mean, unfortunately, you know, it allows us to travel. It allows us to make clothing and, and containers and everything. everything, everything. But it's a limited resource. Here in 2011, we're at a crossroads. Those tiny plankton sinking and compressing over millions of years can't support our appetite for energy. As humans, we have incredible ingenuity, which is why we've been so efficient at using up our reserves of oil. As we look to the future, perhaps it's time to apply that same ingenuity to cutting energy consumption and employing alternative energies, ones that don't depend on ancient ocean plants. With the Pacific Coast Science and Learning Center, I'm Cassandra Brooks.